Hello everyone, and welcome to the 37th Objective-C tutorial. In this tutorial, I'm going to be talking about class extensions, and also how you can create instance variables in both your class extensions, which I'll get into, and your implementation, which is uh, on contrary to just creating instance variables in your interface. So again, these are just some sort of additional things that you should know about Objective-C, just you know, additional features that you can use when you're making your own classes. So anyway, um, for class extensions, all this stuff I'm going to be talking about is going to be built inside a class, of course. So um, to do that, we want to go ahead and create a new class. So we'll say Command N or File New File. And just as a side note, this project is completely new. I have Arc enabled, um, but we won't really be using ARC anyway. But, so anyway, uh, for here we have, uh, we just want to create a new Objective-C class, so we'll call it class ext, and you, it doesn't matter what you call it, but I'm just calling it that for a class extension tutorial anyway. And so now we have our class extension.m and our interface. All right, so now that we have this, what do we want to use a class extension for? So a class extension, as the name would suggest, is an extension to your class, which allows basically for you as the developer of the class to have additional abilities that other people wouldn't have. So for example, you know, if I was just using this class in main.m, so I create, you know, a, a class ext object, then basically I would be limited in my abilities. But for my own purposes, if I create a class extension for my own class that I'm developing, I can add additional abilities to my implementation section. So you'll see how this works in just a bit, but basically a class extension as a summary allows you to add additional abilities that other people that are just using your class don't have, but in your implementation you can use uh, these added benefits. So. Um, a good example to use for when you're working with class property or class extensions is that you can change what a property behaves like. And so you'll see how this works in just a bit, but let's say I create a read only uh, string and a string. So I'll just say in a string name. And so here's my read only and a string with uh, called name. And I want to synthesize this as well. So I'll say at sign synthesize name. All right, so of course this means that I have this name instance variable, and again, if you didn't watch the last tutorial, the synthesized properties will create instance variables for you in all the modern runtimes. But anyway, um, again, we have this property that's read-only, which means it only creates the getter for this property, and I can't set the name of um, my name instance variable. So I'm basically stuck uh, with just using uh, you know the name method and I can't use set name which is fine because you know in some cases you don't want to allow people to set uh, different things in your classes you might only want it to be read only for anyone who's using your class so of course that's why read only exists but um, let's just keep going with this example here so uh, let's say we have another method or a method in our class called log and log, all it's going to do is change the value of our name. So it's going to set the value of our name, and then it's going to uh, ns log its value. And this is a very contrived example. But you'll see that if I try to say self set name, for example, I don't have this ability. Um, you're going to see that I'll get an error here in a second. But basically, I don't actually have set name method because, again, I declared my property to be read only. So in my implementation, I can't even call set name to change the value of my name. And the only way I could really change it is if I set it directly saying name gets, you know, whatever. So uh, just to finish this off though, uh, if I was to NS log this, I would print out my name object like so. So let's just flip over to our main.m section here for a little second and we'll just see what we have. So if I import my class ext file right there, and you know I can create a new class, call it our class, and there we go, get all that stuff out of the way. And now 
if I have our class example here, of course, I could always call our class log because that's, of course, a public method that we had in the interface. Now, you'll also see, though, that our class is limited to just using the name method because of our property being read-only. I don't have any access to a set name. It doesn't, it doesn't exist. So, you know, all I can really do is use name like that. So, you know, that's what we obviously intended to do with our property that was read-only. But for our class, this is kind of limiting because it means our class can't actually use the set name method. And so class extensions can come along here and say, well, let's extend the abilities of our class so that internally we can use our, a set name, for example. So to create a class extension, uh, you can basically, uh, the Basically, the syntax for this is to say at sign interface, which just with just that, and then you say the name of the class. So our name of the class is class ext, and you'll if you remember back to categories, and categories were a way that you could add additional functionality to usually a class that you don't have access to. So in our class or our categories uh, tutorial, I showed you how you could extend. I think I showed you ns string. And for that example, you could uh, extend the NS string class that you really don't have access to. And so that's, that's where categories are really good, is you can add basically methods to classes you don't own. And so a class extension, though, is more used for classes you do own, and you can physically write in the implementation section. So uh, for our interface here, anytime you want to create a class extension, instead of writing uh, like private methods, for example, that we d we could do with a category for explicitly saying you're going to use a class extension, you just use a pair of parentheses like so. And you don't declare anything in it. And this right here would be a class extension. But of course you have to end this with at sign end dec to declare the end of your class extension. Alright, so class extensions allow you to do a lot of things. You can declare methods that you're going to use, you can declare properties, and you can even declare new instance variables. So I'm just going to show you one of the nice things that you can do though, and you can change properties that you already have created in your interface. So in our interface for this property, we had a read-only property for a name. The class extension says, well, screw that, we're going to create a read-write extension, or a read-write property. And so we can say, well, read-write, and we'll say copy and a string and we'll say name just like that and now you'll see that all of our errors magically go away and that's because we redeclared the name property so that it's read write and now we can use the setter and the getter and so now this section works fine because set name is now a valid method that we can use in our class because again we redeclared it in our class extension to be read write. And just as a side note, read write is actually the default for properties, so I could uh, you know leave out the read write, but I think for this tutorial it just makes it a little more explicit. Okay, so now uh, the interesting thing though that makes this so powerful is that if we went over to our main.m you'll see that let's say we want to use that set set name method as well. So we'll say something like our class set name and oh that's interesting we don't actually have the ability to use the set name method and even if we try so we'll try to set this name to Yoda and you'll see well it's just gonna complain and it won't run it'll just you know try to run it and it's just gonna fail because our method doesn't have set name so that's cool you know it's it's gonna complain to anybody who tries to use this but internally we are fine. We can call it all day long. And so that's one of the pretty awesome things about class extensions is you can basically change your properties from read-only to read-write. And so for just to make sure this example still works, if we go ahead and run this, you'll see that we get the output of Yoda when we call our class log right here. Because again, our class extension had the log method just print out the name. And we set the name right here using our uh, our nice new uh, extension feature of our read write property. All right, 
So that's, uh, that's nice and all, and you can even do more with this. If you want to create your own methods, you can create your own methods, uh, void something. And the nice thing about this is that if you were to build this, uh, it would even give you a, uh, an error saying you have an incomplete implementation because you didn't implement uh, this method right here. So class extensions even warn you when you don't uh, implement something that you did in your class extension. And the last thing that you can do with a class extension is create instance variables. So let's say I wanted to make an instance variable called str, just as like a string. And uh, for this purpose here, I'll do, uh, this is kind of bad to do, but actually I'll do, I'll do it the right way. So I'll uh, just create an init method here. So id init, and we'll basically just initialize our object in our init method. So I'll say super init, and if self, we will set str to be best. All right, so now let's say that we're going to change our log. And sorry, I, of course, I have to return self. All right, so now let's say in our log section over here, I'm just going to make a little more space here so we aren't at the bottom of the screen. So in our log, let's just say that I want to print out uh, this str value as well. And so I'll just say uh, percent at sign for an object, and I'll print out str in there as well. And so this should obviously say best Yoda. So that's what it's going to say. And if we go ahead and run this, you'll see that we get that output, best Yoda. So again, this is another cool thing that you can do with class extensions, is you can even add instance variables to class extensions, with which you cannot do with categories. So again, class extensions are basically just an extension to your class uh, that are just hidden to general users. They, uh, when they go to you know import this header file or whatever and run or run any of the methods that you have hidden in your class extension. Uh, they don't have any access to them. They don't know anything about them, and so it's a nice, nice feature you can use to hide anything you really want from the public interface for your class. And so um, the last thing that I want to show you, though, is that you can even declare uh, this has this doesn't really have anything to do with class extensions, but it's just kind of another random feature that you can do if you didn't want to implement a class extension. You can even implement instance variables in your implementation like this. So if I want to say n a string str, I can put the instance variable in my implementation and I can even run it like this. And again, I should get best Yoda as my output. So this is uh, basically just what I want to show you for this tutorial. Class extensions are really just a way that you can expand internally kind of how your class will work which hides all these added benefits from people who go to use your class in their own code, but it gives you, the developer for your class, an ex the extra ability to kind of add whatever you want. So um, it's, it's a pretty powerful feature, and I'm sure, you know, as you go along, you might find some use for it. And um, yeah, so if you have any questions on this, feel free to leave your questions in the comments below. And um, also as kind of general news, I am working on kind of uh, figuring out how I can get the source code for all these tutorials out to you guys. Um, I'm just kind of in the process of making sure all the source code is actually matching the tutorials, which it doesn't all at the moment. So, uh, But anyway, I'm working on a way that I can soon put all the source code online and you can download all these examples so that uh, you know what the finished product looks like and uh, maybe how you're, if you're doing something wrong in your code, how you can fix it. So anyway, just as a side note, but again, if you have any questions in this tutorial, feel free to leave your questions in the comments below, and I will see you next tutorial.